Hello everybody and welcome back to another Land Development 101 video. In this video today we are going to be talking about how to grade for your streets with the gut section. So let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned numerous times in previous posts and videos, all your construction operations are going to generate spoils. So what are you going to do with the wet utility spoils? And now that you're thinking ahead as a developer, in order to best accommodate for the wet utility spoils, you can have your rough grader grade a gut section within the street during his grading operations. This will now allow a place for the wet utility spoils. This is similar to leaving a disposal hole in your site, just as we discussed in the last post. And here's a photo of an actual gut section within a graded street. So here's how it works. A gut section is when your rough grader will cut the street subgrade elevation even lower than what's needed for the future street section. So if you take a look at the example here on the right, the minimum subgrade cut for the future street section is that dotted red line, which is 12 inches below the top of future curb. And if you go below that about another six inches, you now have your gut section in the street for the wet utility spoils. Now keep in mind that six inches can fluctuate depending on how much wet utilities you actually anticipate on installing for your project, uh, as well as how many, how many spoils you anticipate to be generated from that. Then after your wet utility sub finishes installing the pipe, they can place the spoils within the gut section of the street rather than hauling it off, thus saving you money. And once the wet utility spoils are placed back in the street, your rough grader or your street sub will return once again to rebalance and finish grading the streets and haul off any remaining spoils beyond that. Don't forget though that you must ensure that you leave a bench for your curb and gutter machine. What this means is that your gut section will not actually span the full width of the street. Just as you can see in this photo example on the right, typically the bench needs to extend at least three feet from the face of the future curb in order to allow enough room for the curb and gutter machine to sit when pouring. Here's another detailed example from a plan set showing what that bench looks like. And that's all we have today for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know this was a quick video, but this was still a very important concept to learn nonetheless. And now you know an essential trick of the trade done by all the big home builders and developers, especially here in the Southern California area. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave it below. Make sure you subscribe and visit our website where you can find plenty of more posts, videos, and content about land development. Thank you and I hope to see you next time.